we come before you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray your hands of forgiveness and blessings upon us, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray that you, you motivate us, oh Lord. You keep us, Lord Jesus. Father, you help us, oh Lord, to, to, to confess our sins, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we pray to pray with all our hearts, Lord Jesus. Father, oh God, we pray, oh Lord, that when we, we call out to you, Lord Jesus, we pray with the heart of repentance, oh Lord, that we may hear the call of a righteous people, Lord Jesus. Father, oh God, that you shall stretch open your heavens, oh Lord, and stretch forth your mighty hands, oh Lord, and deliver us, Lord Jesus. Deliver us from this plagues and pestilence, O Lord, that is upon our lands, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray for your mercy, O Lord, and your continued grace upon your people, O Lord Jesus. Father, as our country is in this time, O Lord Jesus, and the world is in mourning, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, O Lord, that your mighty hands, O Lord, stretch forth and give relief, O Lord. Heal those who are sick, Lord Jesus. Father, for in your word you say that your stripes, you will be healed by your stripes, Father, Lord Jesus. And this morning, O Lord Jesus, we claim that promise in the name of Jesus, O Lord. Father, yeah. yeah. O Lord, we pray for this nation, O Lord. As we, we start a, a shutdown of our own country, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, O Lord God, that our people are one uh, with a repentant heart, O Lord Jesus. Father, O Lord, that for those who don't know you, O Lord, they will truly come to know you, O Lord, and know your name, O Lord. Father, O Lord, at this time, O Lord, let us reflect, let us intercede, let us, let us introspect, O Lord Jesus, Father, let us call your mighty name, O God. Let every knee bend, O Lord, and every tongue confess that you are one true living God, and you are worthy of praise, O God. Father, O God, we pray for our services, O Lord. We pray for the doctors, O Lord Jesus, for the nurses, O Lord. Father, O God, we pray that you stretch your hands of protection upon them, O Lord, because, O Lord Jesus, we need them, O Lord. We need them, O Lord, to function by your grace, O Lord, and your power, O Lord, and take care of the sick, O Lord Jesus. Yes. Father, O Lord, you said in your word, O Lord, if man should humble themselves, O Lord, and turn from their wicked ways, O Lord, you will hear them, O Lord, you will forgive them, O Lord, and you will heal the Lamb, O Lord Jesus. We claim that, O Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus, O God. Father, O God, we just pray, O Lord, for your provisions, for your people, O Lord. For your people, Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you provide for them, O Lord, God. Father, O Lord, this morning, we pray, O Lord, that every scale shall be peeled off from people's eyes, Lord Jesus. And they will come to you with a heart of repentance, O Lord, God. And they will call out your name, O Lord, and, and ask mercy and forgiveness, Lord Jesus, in their lives, Lord Jesus. Father, O God, we pray that everyone pray with a righteous heart, O Lord, God. Father, this morning, O Lord, we pray for our protective services, O Lord. We pray that when the power of the country is in their hands, O Lord God, we can take advantage of people, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, O Lord, our politicians, O Lord, are given wisdom like you have given on the Son, O Lord God Jesus, in two folds, Lord, so that when they make decisions, O Lord, they, they, they make decisions, O Lord, for the poor, O Lord, and, and the needy, O Lord God, and not just for certain people, O Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, O Lord, that wisdom is granted unto them, O Lord, so that they rule equitably, Lord Jesus. And this and justice, O Lord, and take care of their people, Lord Jesus, Amen. whom you have put in charge, Lord God. Yes. Father, let the world heal, O Lord God. Father, let your arms be upon us, Lord Jesus. Father, O God, let your grace fall upon this world, Lord Jesus. Father, for we have sinned, O Lord God, and Father, we confess to you, O Lord God. Father, O God, this morning, O Lord, we pray, O Lord, with all our might, O Lord, all our strength, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, O Lord, with with an open heart, Lord God, open to receive you in it, Lord Jesus. Father, oh God, this morning, oh Lord, we know, oh God, that you will speak this, this, these promises unto us, oh Lord, these healings, oh Lord, Lord Jesus. We know, oh God, that you will, you will heal us, oh Lord, you will keep us, you will keep the sick amongst us strong, Lord Jesus. Father, oh God, we know, oh God, that you are in our midst, Lord Jesus, and you will continue to, to grant your grace upon us, oh Lord, Lord. Father, this morning, oh Lord, we ask you to speak that life over this country, O Lord. We ask you to speak healing, O Lord, over this country, O Lord. We ask you to speak healing over those who are sick and ailing, those who have this virus, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask you to speak it upon us, Lord. Speak it upon the nation, O Lord God. Upon the world, O Lord God. Because, Lord Jesus, we know, O Lord, that your word does not return to you void, Lord Jesus. Father God, so this morning, O Lord, we pray, O Lord, with a, with a repentant heart, Lord Jesus, yes. Father God. And as we rest everything at the throne, O Lord God, Father, we know you have answered every single prayer, O Lord yeah. Continue, O Lord Jesus, to cover us with that precious blood, O Lord. Draw that blood line around your people. 
when we come out of this, because we will come out of this, dear God, and your name will be glorified in the end, dear God. May you continue, Lord, to bless your people and to keep them, dear Lord. May they continue, Lord, to just plead the blood of Jesus Christ. For you said that when I see the blood, I will pass over thee, dear Lord. I pray the nation of TNT, dear God, will apply the blood of Jesus, the blood that never loses its power, all over their house and upon themselves. And you said that when I see that blood, the blood of your powerful blood, I will pass over thee. Your protection will be upon your people, dear God. And as they continue to dwell, to dwell and abide in your word, dear God, that they will claim your promises, the promises that will not lose, dear God. You are not slack concerning your promises, but you are faithful, dear God. And you promise to keep your people. So this morning I pray for our people, dear God, our Christian people all over the world, may you keep them and protect them, dear God. Supply every need, dear God, as the country's in a rampage, dear God. They do not know what is happening. But I pray, God, that your name is Jehovah Shira. You are a provider. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer, dear God, Jehovah Shalom. You are our peace, dear God, and your peace that passes all understanding. I claim it upon your people this morning in the name of Jesus. May you continue, Lord, to just pour out that spirit upon your people. May there be a revival in the churches in this land, dear God. If my people which I call by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and cry aloud, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. It is your will to pour out a blessing. But I pray that people will call out to thee and ask for forgiveness and repent, dear Lord, as in Jonah you send him, dear God. And the people heard him and they repented with sackcloth and ashes and you healed their land. I pray, Lord, that that will happen in TNT and in the world. May continue to bless the sign, dear God. Continue to open up doors and open up minds as thy word will go forth through the airways, dear Lord. May continue to bring forth fruit and in the meantime, keep our people strong. Keep them strengthened and what they have learned from their pastors and the churches.
thank you, Lord Father, for your many blessings in our lives, Lord Jesus, and for just being, Lord Father, a very present help, O God, in the times of trouble, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father, for just always being there for us, O God, a God, Lord Father, that never leaves us, a God, that never forsakes us, O God, but you are always there, Lord Father, attending unto the prayer of your children, Lord Father. Lord Jesus, we just ask this morning, O oh God, that you would continue to pour out your grace upon our lives, O oh God, pour out your mercies in our lives, Lord Jesus, where we have fallen short, O oh God, where we have failed you, Lord Father. Lord Jesus, that you would just cover us, Lord Father, and that you would forgive us, Lord Father, from all our transgressions, Lord Jesus, and that you would heal our land this morning, Lord Father. We just ask this morning, O oh God, that you would help us, Lord Father, just to, to humble ourselves, O oh God, and to truly seek your face and spirit and the truth, Lord Jesus. And Lord Father, we know, God, that you would hear from heaven, Lord God, and that you would hear our prayers this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, we just want to commit all of our country, Lord Father, into your precious holy hands, O oh God, all the citizens of our country, O oh God. We commit those that in authority, Lord Jesus, Lord Father, that you would be direct them and guide them, O oh God. Lord Jesus, in this time, O oh God, that you would give them the great wisdom, Lord Jesus. Help them to trust in you, Lord Father, to make decisions, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we lift up each person in this country, Lord Father, that you would just take charge and take control, O oh God. And Lord Father, this morning, we just want to lift up your people before you, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, we know God, but the devil may have meant for evil, Lord Father, may mean for evil, Lord God. We know that you are going to turn it around this morning for good, Lord Jesus Christ. We know, God, what the devil meant to separate your people, Lord God, Lord Jesus. You, Lord Father, are going to work it all out, Lord Father, all over this country, all over this world, Lord God. Lord Father, as your people gather together, Lord Jesus, that you will be in the midst, Lord Father. Lord Father, you said that too much, God, and you are there in the midst, Lord Jesus, and as, Lord Father, we lift up one another, Lord Jesus, that you would just hear our prayers this morning, O oh God, and that your name, O oh God, would be glorified, Lord Jesus. We know that you have started a good work, O oh God, and that you are going to finish it, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, there is nothing that can stop it, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, we just want to commit everything into your precious holy hands, O oh God, and and Lord Father, help us, O oh God, to continue to trust in you, Lord Father. Even though what is going on, Lord Father, help us to continue, Lord Father, just to seek your face and to do what you have called us to do, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, to continue to proclaim your peace, Lord Father, in the midst of this storm, O oh God, Lord Father, that you are our Prince of Peace, Lord Jesus. And we claim that all over our lives, all over our country, all over this world this morning, Lord Father. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for just being so good to us, Lord Jesus, and for just providing for us, Lord Father. Lord Father, we just want to commit everything into your precious holy hands and we continue to, to use and to hold on to that mighty, powerful name of Jesus, oh God, because we know, oh God, that in your name, oh God, chains are broken. In your name, oh God, Lord Father, there is healing, there is liberty, there is freedom in your name, Lord Jesus, and we just want to Claim your name, O oh God, this morning over this virus, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Father, that you would bring healing, O oh, oh God. Lord Father, that you would protect us, Lord Father. We just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for just hearing our prayers this morning. In Jesus' name I pray.
morning, everyone who is watching right now. And we here to give God all the praise. We here to give God all the glory. Because He is King of all kings and Lord of all lords. And His name is Jesus. As we sing on this song, every praise, because every praise belongs to God.
everybody has a lot of fear, but God is the one that holds us in the palm of our hands. So look to Jesus. Don't look to man. Don't look to anybody else, but look to Jesus. Hallelujah. And this time, we're going to have a scripture reading from Brother Clyde. So.
God, who are telling those dry bones to come alive. Let it come alive, you know. When don't let don't be deceived, but pray and, and ask God for God's favor to be upon your life, even those that are on the outside air and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Tell that dry bone to come alive and, and live for Jesus, live for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As we sing all this song, Jesus is my deliverer.
you can do so uh, using my uh, phone number. All right, and it's always open during the services, and somebody is looking at it right now for uh, for your text and, and for your for your messages. All right, uh, so the numbers again are three eight one six eight six three, and then also four nine nine twenty four thirteen. All right, so we're looking forward to, uh, looking forward to to hear. From, from you. I'm going to be sharing today from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verses 14. So I'm asking you uh, to get your Bibles and I know some of our members have indicated that uh, they are tuning in and not just only tuning in but they are dressed like if they're coming to church. Uh, and so that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Praise God. Some people are saying that they feel that you know while they're doing this live broadcast, they feel that they are just uh, in, in in church. And so we really thank God uh, uh, for for that. All right. So we're going to read God's word together again. Second Chronicles chapter seven and this is uh, fourteen. Now I have memorized this verse of scripture and. Uh, I have encouraged our members to do the same as, as well. So you can read with me, all right? Your home, you can read, you can read with me. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. So I have been sharing with you about following the doctor's orders. Now, have you been doing that? Have you been following Dr. Jesus's orders? And notice what uh, his orders are, his instructions are again, all right, that we would humble ourselves, that's the first order, number one. And number two, we should pray. And number three, we should seek his face. And number four, we should turn from our wicked ways. And then he promises that as we do those four things, he says that I will hear from heaven, I will forgive your sin, and I will heal your land. Wonderful, wonderful promises. Let us look to God in prayer as we go into his word. Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful for these opportunities that have presented themselves that we can still do these live broadcasts so that our members, their Father, and the people of our nation and everyone that is tuning even abroad, their Father, can be blessed by the wonderful singing we are encouraged, their Lord, by the worship today, their Father, by the scripture readings, their Lord, and thy word. And then we take it to heart, dear Lord, what you are saying to us today. And we pray, dear Father, that as we glean from these points, these four points, uh, dear Lord, that indeed, uh, that we will follow these instructions that we will have, uh, dear Lord, God, that healing that you have promised. Uh, our sins can be forgiven, and we can see a great revival taking place. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, how important it is to, for us to, to humble ourselves, number one. Well, it means that it could mean the difference between life and death itself. It could mean the difference between hell and heaven because I'm taking this a, a step more, not just about physical healing, which is so desirous of, of those that are sick but most importantly, the healing of the soul. And this is the ultimate healing that God wants to bring. He not only wants to heal us of our physical infirmities and our diseases, but he also wants to heal our soul from sin that has been plaguing humanity ever since Adam and Eve went astray in the Garden of Eden. And the only God can bring healing to our souls and forgive our sins. Now, 
again, how important it, it is to humble ourselves. Well, I want to share with you today a second passage of scripture coming from the New Testament, and that's the book of Luke chapter 18 and verses 9 through verses 14. So I invite you to join with me in the reading of this second passage of scripture. Again, Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through verses 14. He spake a parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself and said, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Well, as usual, I like to begin my messages with a, a humor. So here it is, all right, in light of the following the doctor's orders. So a man went to visit a psychiatrist and he said, Doc, I have two problems. So the doc said, well, tell me about it. So the man began by saying, first of all, the first problem that I have is that I think that I am a Coca-Cola machine. So the doctor sat him down and started therapy, which lasted weeks. And after the doctor gave it his best shot for all these weeks with no changes, then fin finally the doctor jumped up and he took four quarters out of his pocket and he shoved it down the man's mouth and grabbed him by the ears and shook him until he swallowed the quarters. And the doctor shouted now, okay, now give me a Coca-Cola. The man replied, I can't because that is my second problem, I'm out of order. <laughs> well, in the text that I've just read from Luke chapter 18, Something is out of order. In fact, I want to even say that someone is out of order. Now folks, oftentimes we hear people say this, that there is nothing wrong with me. You talk to people and immediately they, be, they will begin to defend themselves and be, defend their position. And they will say, that nothing is wrong with me. Well, listen to this story. This is a true story I'm sharing with, with you. So it goes like this. The man said, there's nothing wrong with me. Nonetheless, the paramedic pleaded with the injured driver. But sir, you, you've just been involved in a terrible car accident and you're bleeding. You have some bruises and contusions. There may be serious internal damage. But again, the accident victim protested. There's absolutely nothing wrong with me. I am just fine. I'm feeling okay. But the paramedic kept insisting, sir, I would advise at least have a doctor look you over. We have an ambulance right here, and we could take you to the hospital. It is just a few blocks away. It would not take long at all. 
But the injured man was angry and upset at this point and he said to the paramedic, I told you there's nothing wrong with me. But the paramedic said, but sir, and while he was saying that the man walked over to his wife's car, got in and drove away from the accident scene. Well, later that same night, tragedy struck. Guess what happened? The man died at his home. And I'm certain that you guess it how he died. He died from the same thing that the paramedic was suggesting that he had internal bleeding. But the man kept saying all this time, regardless of the bleeding, regardless of the advice, regardless of the instructions, he kept saying that there is nothing wrong with me. That is a very dangerous statement, especially when it comes to our spiritual life. Many people believe that there is absolutely nothing wrong with them because they are saying, listen, I am not a great sinner. I have, haven't committed adultery. I haven't committed fornication. Nothing is wrong with me. I am not a robber. I am not a bandit. Nothing is wrong with me. All right. I am not a wicked person. Nothing is wrong with me. I am not a, a liar. I am not a, a cheater. I have been faithful to my spouse. Nothing is wrong with me. But imagine standing before God someday in eternity and then telling God that there is nothing absolutely wrong with me. When, brothers and sisters, the Bible makes it very clear in the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, there is none righteous. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God has been saying to us, all this time that we are all sinners we have a sin issue something is wrong with us and when we keep on saying that nothing is wrong with us then folks when we stand before god on the day of judgment you might be surprised to hear these words depart from me you curse it into everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels we have uh, to take another position remember our initial text uh, if my people which i call my, my name will humble themselves uh, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways uh, notice what god says from their wicked ways uh, then he says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. What God is saying that every one of us, even though you might be saying that nothing is wrong with us, God is saying there is something wrong with us. And what we need to do, we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that God will exalt us in due time. What we should be saying is, dear God, rather than saying there is nothing wrong with me, we should be saying, God, there is nothing right with me. This is what we should be saying. We should be conveying to God that, God, I am repentant. I am sorry, all right, for the sin that I have committed. Jesus looked wrong in Luke chapter 18 and he was surrounded by many people as oftentimes going about in the villages and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing the sick and raising the dead he was surrounded usually by big crowds but as you look at this particular crowd the Bible gives us the indication that in the crowd, there were many, many people who trusted in themselves. They trusted in their goodness. They trusted in their righteousness. They trusted in their good works. And they were saying to themselves, nothing is wrong with me, Jesus. Nothing is wrong with me, God. They were saying that they were righteous, self-righteous. But at the same time, they were saying that 
they were treating others with contempt. On one hand, they are saying nothing is wrong with me, but on the other hand, they are looking down on others. They are judging others. They are discriminating against others. They are comparing themselves with these other people that they are saying that they are no good, that they are ungodly, they are righteous. And because they are comparing themselves with these people, now they take the position that I am better, I am more holier. I am in a better standing. I am righteous. And so Jesus looked at the crowd and so he mentioned here this uh, this, this, this story. Now, if you were a first century Palestinian, you will find that the Pharisee from a worldly perspective was a good man. Because in our parable today, Jesus spoke about the Pharisee he spoke about the publican. So the Pharisee was considered a good man, not so bad at all. In fact, he was a model Jewish citizen. The word Pharisee itself would mean separated. It means to say that he did not mingle with any and anybody at all. He, he was not a person that would live like the normal man as it were. The way that the normal citizen would, would live. No, he had a higher standard as, as it were. Which is really something. Which is really something. Because the people of Israel were God's chosen people. And, our, and we all know that as you read the Old Testament, there is a command to the nation of Israel that they were to be a separated people. They were to be a different people. They were to live a holy lives. And there were many commandments that were given to the nation of Israel because they were specially selected, specially chosen, set apart for God. Now, among the nation of Israel, although they were already separated unto the Lord. Here you have now the Pharisee. The Pharisee. So what you are saying, folks, uh, is that uh, he was a, a person, all right, set apart from those already set apart. So you are talking about uh, a man here who looked at himself and said nothing is wrong with me. Nothing is wrong with me. So, it is no surprise to hear Jesus telling the story here about the Pharisee. He stood by himself when he went to church. And it's not because of the coronavirus that he set apart himself. He wouldn't rub shoulders with nobody. He wouldn't sit even three feet. <laughs> he wouldn't be that close to the crowd. You see, when he came to church, you had to make a clear path for this man. You understand? This man is mingling with nobody. He is shaking hands with nobody at all. He stood straight, tall. This man was set apart. And so the Bible tells us in our text, he stood by himself. Notice what our text tells us. He stood by himself. He was apart from the regular crowd. Now remember, the Jewish people came and they were allowed to come to church. All right? They were allowed to come to church. They already set apart. But this far as even though there were the Jewish people that came to church, yet he did not mingle among them. He stood by himself, the Bible tells, tells us, physically standing by himself from everyone that was in the temple that day. And where was he, folks? He was up in front. This Pharisee was up in front. He wanted to be in the full view of everybody who came to church. He wanted everybody to see him. 
Look at me. I am not like you. I am not like you all. I am different. I'm at a higher level. I'm at a higher plane. I am no ordinary church member. Right? This is what was happening. He wanted to be in the field. He wanted to make that grand entry. When he comes in, he has to be noticed. Everybody has to see him. People will have to actually bow when this man is coming in because he was higher than everybody else in church. As it were, he was better than everybody else. And so he stood up in front. So everybody could see him. And then he prayed. And the prayer that he prayed was very, very impressive. I want to say that. His prayer was not secretive. As he was not whispering. No, he stood by himself. And he prayed aloud. He prayed aloud so that everybody could hear his prayer. Everybody could admire his prayer. That how he could really pray. And he was actually speaking to himself in prayer. And I'll have to say, I'll talk about that a little bit later. He wasn't really talking to God. <laughs> there, are many, there are many persons that pray. But I feel, folks, that a lot of people that actually pray to themselves or pray to those that are gathered. They want everybody to hear them. But not God. Shouldn't be prayer be made to God? Shouldn't this be the reason why we pray, folks? It should not be about impressing our brothers and sisters who are in church or impressing our neighbors. No. Our prayer should be made to God. But this man here, he prayed, and his prayer was very admirable. All right? In his prayer, he is saying that I am a good man. He is saying in his prayer that nothing is wrong with me. He is saying that I am a righteous man. He is saying, listen, that you see me, I live according to the law. I live the Torah. I live the, the scriptures. This is what he, what he is saying in his prayer. Now, if you question the will, validity of that statement just look to his example look to the example look at the prayer as we as I speak to you about some things that he itemized in, in his prayer he said he fasted now folks hats off to that man he said he fasted now you know that it's a very good thing to do. Many of us don't do it as often as we should. But this man fasted. Not only fasted, this man tithed at the same time also. He tithed more than the law of Moses even required. Now, in the law of Moses, as it is prescribed, Fasting should be done once a week. But this man was doing double duty. He not only fasted once a week, which is prescribed by the law, but the man fasted twice a week. This is what I'm saying. You admire this man. And he wanted everybody in church to know how holy he was. The sacrifice that he was making. The double duty that he was making. This guy not only fasted twice a week, but he was super generous. Super generous. Not just given 10% of his income, but the man was given 10% of everything that he possessed. In other words, he was going above and beyond in his giving. Now, some of us, I know that we have struggle and we have problems just in giving the 10%. But look at this man. This man had no problem with giving that 10%. In fact, 
he gave much more than that. Everything that he owned, he gave 10, 10%. Very, very commendable. That is a good guy. Again, second half off to him. So if anyone was right before God in the church that day, <laughs> it would be this Pharisee. This Pharisee was more right than anybody else, folks. And he made sure that everybody in church knew how right he was, how righteous he was, because he prayed and he prayed loudly for everybody to hear. So let me say this, as a pastor, that is the kind of man I want in my church. <laughs> that is the kind of man that I want to have on my membership. Amen. A man that is so devoted and dedicated to God. A man that is giving so much to the kingdom of God. Folks, let me tell you something. If you put him up and you advertise him, all the pastors around will want him to be their member. No question about that. In fact, we would love to have this man right away. We ain't waiting for a three months period to test this man if this man really genuine to put him into any position in church. We only wait for six months. I know some of us have policies that somebody who come in or come in, you don't just take them and you give them positions. The Bible says be careful about the novice. You've got to be proven. But a man like this, let me tell you something. You don't want to wait a six months before you put this man in some position and what not. Three months, three months. A man like this, watch me, from the time he come in, you're giving him position one time. In fact, let me tell you something. You want him to serve on the church board and church council one time. You want him to be part of the eldership one time. Everyone would be happy also to welcome this guy. If you have a daughter and you're looking for intended son in law, this is the guy that one time you want to talk to him one time. Boy, listen, I, I just I just love you. You understand? And I, in fact, I have a beautiful daughter and I want to propose marriage one time. That is the situation here. You understand? This was just a good man as good as it could get. You can't find a better man at all like him as it was seen in the eyes of men. But let's turn our attention to the second character in our study. We are talking about the one who is in the back. The one who is in the last seat in the back. The one who is at the corner of the church. You can hardly notice that he is there. In fact, he wants to be invisible. He don't want to be noticed like this Pharisee coming and everybody have to notice that he making a grand entry in church. He quietly slipped in. In fact, he was even shy to come in. As, as it were, he was hesitant to come in because he is saying that I am not worthy even to come to church. I am not even worthy to be in the house of God then. And so he slipped in there. He did not want to be noticed. He did not want to be heard at, at all. So he's the tax collector. When you think of all this guy, your blood will boil. Mm -hmm. That man coming to church, in fact, the members are empty enough to know some the time he come in. People begin to look around when finally they notice him. Eh? What he doing in church? This man has no right coming in church. He should not be in church at all. You know, there are some people like that. They're fussy about some people coming to church, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, they forget that the house of the Lord is open to everybody. Yeah. And we at Power and Science Ministries have always been like that. We have welcomed everybody to come and to worship God. This is a place, Jesus said, I did not come to call the righteous. All right, but I've come to call sinners to repentance because those that are sick they need the doctor, not those that are well. And so this tax collector comes in, 
and from a worldly perspective, he is not like a Pharisee who is a good man. He is a bad man. In fact, he's a very, very, very bad man. He is considered a traitor who is working for Rome. He's sort of like a puppet doing the bidding of a foreign world power. He was not honest with collecting the taxes for Rome too because he was using certain loopholes to get more money from himself. So he was taking more taxes for, for Rome than he should from the people, from his own people. That is why they consider him a traitor. The Jewish people consider the tax collectors a traitor because you are one of us. Hey, wait a minute. You are a Jewish man like us. You understand? How is it that, 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 that you are working for Rome and you are collecting taxes and they knew that he was cheating because he was collecting from his own people more than he's supposed to be collecting and pocketing the rest. No wonder why when he came into church, everybody turned up their nose. Blood began to boil. What this man doing in church? He's a wicked man. Look what he has been doing to us and he is a traitor he should not be in church in fact he should be thrown into prison we should we should have the authorities arrest this man in fact Rome supposed to strip him of his office and of his power because this man been, been, been cheating they should find somebody better to collect the taxes that's settling for this man here. So from his job to his politics to his lifestyle, everything about this man flies in your face of your values, of what you believe and what, what should be upheld. He was, in other words, no model citizen at all. Everybody knew it. This publican. But you know what the Bible tells us something? He knew it too. He knew it. And that changes the whole thing somehow. He knew it. And he wanted to do something about it. He wanted a change in his life. He knew that he was a wicked man. He knew he was a dishonest man. He knew he was a sinner. He knew he was a cheat. He knew who he was, folks. He did not come into church to pretend anything. He came into church looking for forgiveness. He came that day with a repentant heart. He came that day and he was humbling himself, just as our text says. If we will humble ourselves, God will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sins and he will heal our land. And this is indicative of what he prayed and how he prayed. Because the Bible tells us, and look, look, look at this man. Look at this man. The man would not even lift his head, unlike the Pharisee who prayed so proudly and so loudly. This man would not even lift his head to heaven. Because why? Because he felt that he was so unworthy. He did not deserve God's forgiveness. He did not deserve God's grace. He felt that he was so unworthy. He, he did not lift his head. The Bible tells us he bowed his head and he smote upon his breast. You could have seen him. Folks, the guilt, you could have seen how repentant this man was. He smote upon his breast and listened to his words. God be merciful to me a sinner. God be merciful to me a sinner. The preacher did not have to preach and said you are a sinner. Nobody had to, to come to him. No, none of the church members had to come to him and said listen you are a sinner. You are guilty. You are a wicked man. He knew that. And when he came to church that day for somebody he came to church to make right with God and humble himself the first thing that he did, and that's what our text says, the first instruction of the doctor Jesus is to humble yourself. This is what he did. God be merciful to me, a sinner. In fact, the, the Greek translation, coming from the Greek translation, it would have been translated, God be merciful to me, not a sinner, but God be merciful to me, the sinner. 
This is what the Greek would say. He said that I am the sinner. I am the sinner. You see, folks, he was not at all casting blame on anybody else for his actions and his lifestyle and what he was doing. He was making excuses that they are taught. Like many people making excuses. You talk to them and they're only giving you excuse, excuse, excuse. As a pastor, I could write, I tell you, a library with excuses that I have had over the years. In fact, you know, I, it's a time, I mean, folks, this is a time of, 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 of real seriousness, I mean, yeah. with this virus and so on. But on the flip side of it, something good has been coming out. Because I have been pleading with my people of power and science which you the members to come to church. And you were surprised to know, folks, that regardless of my pleading, how many still will not come. Once a while they might show up. But you know the flip side of what is happening? And that time the doors of our church were open, now the doors have been closed. We have been shut down. Yeah. Right? As it were, the doors itself, but not the church, is still still operating by the gate. You can't shut down the church, my brother. Jesus said in Matthew 16 that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not be built. So the doors might be closed, but the church has shut down. We still have a live broadcast, and even though we still didn't have a live broadcast, folks, we're still going on by the grace of the Lord. Amen. But you know, folks, what is amazing to me is that people now are begging and desiring a want to come to church. When church was the doors are open, everybody could come. You had to beg them. Now they're closed. Now they're begging to come to church. So I want to see after this whole thing over. And if I still stand here, by the grace of the Lord, by the grace of the Lord, folks. Amen. Them same people, I hope they are saying, now it's over. We don't have to bother too much to come to church. It's over now. <laughs> No way over, you know how a lot of people are. When the problem take them and the pressure take them, they run into God. But as soon as it's over, well, it's over now. I don't have to worry about it too much. You're waiting for next wave. It's wave after wave after wave. We've been getting folks, and, and this is a big wave. This is like a tidal wave. We've been having a lot of waves the last decade. Eh? The last decade. A lot of wave, a lot of wave. But this one is like a tidal wave now. But folks, when you get over this by the grace of the Lord and you're still a repenter, you still don't want to hear, well, expect another one. Mm. Expect another one. Jesus said it will happen. We are living in the last days. So, the man said, God be merciful to me because I am the sinner. In closing this morning, would you humble yourself? Humble yourself as God will say Admit that we have gone astray. Like Nehemiah. Because we as Christians might say, why should I pray this prayer? But Nehemiah, when the walls of Jerusalem was burnt with fire and broken down, read his prayer. Read his prayer, folks. Nehemiah, on behalf of the nation, said that we have sinned. He prayed on behalf of the nation and said, we have gone astray. Folks, members of the church, those of you who are born again, believers in Christ, we have to intercede for our nation because this particular prayer is a prayer for the nation. Yes, it's a plea for the nation. It's an instruction for the nation, not just an individual. You know, look at it. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. This is what the word of God is saying. Folks, and Trinidad needs healing. Yeah. Our nation needs healing. Not just on physical infirmity, but folks, something worse than that. And that is a spiritual infirmity. That is sin. And no hand sanitizers could wash that sin in your heart. It is only the blood yes. of Jesus Christ. And I will speak more about that. Later. 
Would you bow with me and pray? We're saying, Pastor, I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to pray. Turn from my wicked deeds and I will God will forgive my sin. Folks, I said that prayer when I was just 10 years of age. And God saved me. He forgave me of my sin. And He can do it for you right now. Would you pray this prayer? Right where you are, in your homes and wherever you are receiving this live broadcast. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I am the sinner. I am the one that has saved in words, deeds, and thoughts. I have no excuse for my sin. But I confess my sin and ask forgiveness. And I now take Jesus to be my Savior. And I will serve him now and for all eternity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You have said that prayer. I would like you to send me a message. Send us a message quickly. It's a pastor. I've said that prayer. And God has forgiven me of my sin. And now you are a child of God. And I want to encourage you to read your Bible. Every day, start with the New Testament. Pray and see His face. Glory to God. And as soon as the church doors are open again, come. Worship on us. Let us know your decision. We'll enroll you in, in classes and get you well on your way. Amen. Knowing Jesus better. We're going to pray too for others. We have some prayer requests coming in here today. Several, several prayer requests coming in here this morning. And so we have Melissa is requesting prayer for safety in, in her work. We know that she's on the front line. She's one of our members as a nurse and in the hospital and we would indeed be praying for her. Brother Dwayne wants prayer also for his safety too as he is in the prison service. We know what is going on there as well and we would pray for him. Sister Joyce Lane says to pray for herself and the entire, and the entire family and um, God bless her. She has a new son-in-law, Rajesh. He's a wonderful man. God has already blessed her with another grandchild, son, and Ethan. Praise God and her lovely daughter with Whitney. We indeed will be praying for, for them. Also, there's a request for Kendall Joseph uh, to pray for problems that he has with uh, breathing, which has given him in Sonia. I know that this is something that is spreading all over the country. Yes, the anxiety. I know if you just only get a little sniffle or you cough once already in your mind, I wonder if I have this virus. And no, that could bring a lot of stress, folks. A lot of stress, stress and sleepless nights. We gotta be praying, praying for Kendall too. Also, there's another one for Kai that's uh, for the SC exams. We know that uh, all the children, parents too, are uh, thinking about, well, you know, where is that school going to be reopened? Everything is on hold. So I know there's a lot of challenge there too with, with that. And then uh, Sister Vitra is getting some pains in the chest. And uh, we're going to pray for her again. It, uh, it might be anxiety too. And so we have all these requests. So folks, uh, I want us to join together. Let's join together for all these prayer requests. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring before you my vision. Lord, and I do pray that you will keep her safe there, Lord, as she is working as a nurse in that hospital, around so many people. Protect her there, Lord, draw that bloodline of her, not just only her, but for all her colleagues that work with her in that hospital there, Lord. And the doctors as well, not only in Mount Hope, but Lord, all the institutions in our country where people are healing, we not only pray, dear Lord, for the medical staff, dear Lord, but we also pray, dear Lord, for all the patients, that your grace and your hand will be upon them, dear Father. 
and that their Lord Jesus, even for this coronavirus, it will not spread further, but it will come to a quick conclusion in the name of Jesus, their Father, and that our nation will be spared the worst of it in the name of the Lord. We pray, dear Lord Jesus, too, that we will have enough food to feed the nation during this time. Enough medicine, dear Lord, for the nation, dear Father. We pray for safety during this time, dear Father. In Jesus' name, Brother Dwayne, dear Lord, who is in that prison service, protect him and keep him safe, dear Lord Jesus. As well as all his colleagues and all the staff members, even the prisoners, dear Lord. We pray that they too will feel your grace today and come to know the Savior. This is a joy saying of all our family. Thank you, God, for them. They love you. They are faithful. They continue to keep them and watch over them, protect them, draw bloodline around that house. No pain will come near their dwelling, their Father. Continue, dear Lord, to supply their every need for Kendall. Joseph, dear Lord, for the breathing problems, I pray and not be able to sleep, dear Father. I pray, dear Lord God, that your peace will be upon him. Anxiety will go in the name of Jesus. For Kyle, dear Lord, concerning the SEA exams, uh, dear Father, and for the parents as well, dear Lord, I pray, dear Lord, that you give them grace to a lot of students, uh, Lord, receiving their, their Lord some work to do home, dear, dear Father. And all will work out in the name of of Jesus and, uh, and Silas is not feeling well. I pray God that you will heal him of his cough and his cold. Uh, since the victory is having those chest pains in Jesus' name. Since you can put your hand on that chest as we pray. Father, I pray God that you will heal for their Lord. That anxiety, dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you will take that away. Dear Lord, that you experience your peace, dear Lord, and she will be breathing properly in the name of Jesus. And by extension, dear Lord God, all those that have been more vulnerable in our country at this time, dear Lord, for Richard, for Ryan, dear Lord God, may your hand be upon them, protect them, and keep them safe in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the good job, dear Lord Jesus. The government is doing their father uh, to to make sure that the, the, the country is as safe as it safe could be. Their Lord, all those in the front line, the the, the, the police officers, their Lord Jesus, and the, the army, their Lord, this two weeks are ahead of us. Uh, their Lord Jesus, where there are additional measures that will be taken, their Lord, just their Lord to, to help us to be more safe, their Father. We pray that to give us grace to go through this time, their Lord Jesus. Those that have suffered loss in jobs, their Lord, we pray that their need will be supplied. They will not run dry, their Lord, of, of the necessities of food and water. We'll have electricity running, their Lord, all these amenities that we need, their Lord Jesus, uh, that will continue, their Father God. And for the nation of this world today that is suffering, we pray, oh God, uh, so much death worldwide, dear Lord, the virus, dear Lord. Uh, as, as the ravishing nations, dear Lord, we pray, oh God, for your grace and mercy in America and the suffering, dear Lord, that we will bring a speedy end to it, dear Lord Jesus. Uh, dear Father, in Italy, dear Lord, God, and other places in India, dear Father, we look to you for your protection in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to invite again the for a man to come and to, you know, to conclude with a nice song, go to end in worship and praise on, unto the Lord. Again, we are, by the grace of God, endeavoring to continue this live broadcast. So this evening, 6.30, uh, we have it live again, and, and Wednesday night, we'll be continuing to do that. Again, next Sunday morning, we'll be having communion, get that uh, Welsh grape juice, and get ready to make your roti, no salt, no bacon powder for the bread. Glory to God. Alright, please do continue to send those uh, prayer requests and be sure we pray for you.
to keep us throughout this week and bring us back into the next point in time. Jesus, in my prayer, amen. All right, guys.